every step of the way, every bolt that I install, everything, how I do it, what I do, why I do it, we're going to get into that. Let's start throwing it on the truck. All right, I got my quarter inch ratchet here. We have a 10 millimeter bolt down here. We'll fill cap right there. We're going to take this off after we get this off. Pull this off first, set that down, oil cap can come up, and then we'll pull up on this cover. Get that out, put the cap back on so we don't have any debris fall in. This is why we pulled up on it, that's just connected right there. We can set this aside. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is pull off this bolt because I want to get this coolant out. I have a magnetic tray right here. This is going to hold my bolts. And now we can pull this up over like so. I'm gonna unscrew this. This is the coolant that runs through the charge air cooler to cool it. There's a radiator down below here. That's what gets the airflow through it to generally cool the whole setup. So we need to get some of this coolant out because when we take off these hoses, we're going to lose a lot of coolant down there and it's going to make a mess. So we're going to minimize the mess right here. And all I have is just a little sucker. You can use any kind of fluid evacuation device. Now I'm going to go pour this into a container and then we'll pull more out. I'm going to set this down so it'll refill. Might as well pull the dipstick out a little bit. Now there's a lot of other ways you could do this. You could just let it spill on the ground. You could do whatever you want. But this is how I chose to do it. It's going to minimize my mess. You can see the bottle is refilling itself a little bit. And uh, so I got the majority of it out. Now there's still going to be a mess and there's not much I could do about it, but in a garage use, this is, uh, I mean, this was super cheap. I think this was like 12 or $13. Again, links for everything that I use or a, a version of it will be in the description. So you can go ahead and do that as well. Let's go ahead and give it one more shot. All right. We're going to have to accept that right there, which is fine. Put the dipstick tube back in dipstick back in so that way we don't have any issues now this is our charger cooler right here that's what we need to get off these hoses come off because we have replacements with the charger cooler kit when you pull off the sensor move that out of the way basically we're going to start off with the stuff back here i'm trying not to break the tab so i'm just kind of rocking it back and forth as best as i can Go ahead and disconnect that. That was just slide this lock back and then push on this tab right here. This one, pop that free. That was just to roll this back because that's going to stay put. So that's free. So now we need to get this one off and that's going to be the same as, except this one is definitely it right at the end but you can see we got the majority of it so that will be able to go back into its position we're gonna take this off and roll it over another 10 millimeter just roll that over here set that in a safe area now we've got this bracket that's held on three nuts down there. Pull that out of the way. We're going to set that aside because we're not going to reuse this. With that aside, we can pull off the resonator and the elbow. This is a seven millimeter here. 
This is just a little clip. So with this one, we can just pull this up. Seven millimeter socket. Just need to loosen it up a little bit. So now with this clip undone, we should be able to pull it out. Okay, just rolled that out. Has an assembly right here. Very surprising. Minimal signs of oil. Very surprising. There is some oil inside there though. So what I'm going to do is just set this down like this. All right, coming along. So now we need our temperature sensor. Or this is number one. Number two is down here. All right, so this is number one sensor. What we're going to do is pull this gray tab back like so. And then you can push down on it. And that's going to allow this to come off. Now for the next one, number two, that's this one right here. This one's tough to get to. This is we'll attempt to squeeze it. Came out like, like easy, easy. Next we're going to pull off this charge air cooler elbow right here. And this one goes into the intake manifold. And it's a 7 millimeter as well. Now, that's down here where you need to get to to loosen up. So it's not going to be able to be shown on the video. But it's down here. That's a 7 millimeter. It's on the bottom side. Looks just like this. So we're going to take off both of those and pull this pipe out. Okay, squeezing and twisting. That's going to free this up. But if that doesn't do it, and if you have a hose tool, now this can puncture the hose itself, so be very careful, but I'm just sliding it underneath to kind of break it free. All right, we can see the oil that's in there. Not much, not as much as I was expecting, so that's a good thing. You can see the oil inside. There's our oil inside the intake manifold or heading in. That's all passing through because that's a closed PCV system. This hose right here is what gives off the oil vapor. It goes into the turbo, through the turbo, through the charge air cooler, and into the intake manifold, which then burns in the cylinder and then also goes out the exhaust. And what I don't like about it is it also goes into the particulate filter, DPF. So we have a fix in the future. Or not a fix, but just a catch can that's going to catch that oil on the side and you can drain it. So rather than it going into your engine, you catch it and drain it out. Let's continue on with the charge air cooler install. All right, so what I'm gonna do is leave this hose attached to the charge air cooler here. And then I'm gonna take this off from here. So we'll leave the hoses attached. This reservoir will stay put. And then all we have to do is just unbolt the charge air cooler itself and pull it up because we've disconnected everything that's attached to it at this time. Actually, I'm going to do this hose and then we'll do this hose. Just some regular, regular channel lock style pliers here. I'm just going to move that down. You can see that it's beyond that portion. We're going to do the same here. And that one broke the hose loose, which is nice. So we're going to take advantage of that and just walk it off. We may lose some coolant there, so I'm going to grab some paper towels. I'm just trying to minimize mess. That's all. We'll never catch it all unless you do a complete drain, which we did not do. None came out. That's beautiful. Go ahead and take this off right here. We can set this hose aside. We're not going to use it. 
All right, I'm just gonna set this down here. We're gonna hope that we capture it. One thing you need to remember is don't forget that there's paper towels in there. Catch on fire, burn the whole truck down. All right, now what we'll do is use the hose pick tool. Just kind of get it under there. We don't want it to rupture the hose at all, no holes in it. We will not be using it again, but if you ever return the vehicle back to stock, you're gonna to wanna to reuse this. So I'm just being very gentle walking it around. There we go. Wiggle it off. No coolant lost. That is just beautiful. I'm gonna set that like that for right now until we're ready to swap the hoses. So that way if this is spilling out, then I have an opportunity to catch it, flip it over. So I could pull out my paper towels right now because we did not make a mess. All right, what I did was take off the caps from the other charge air cooler. We're gonna put that on there like so. They're a little loose. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this to minimize mess. I don't want burning coolant smell from my truck if I can avoid it. And uh, I don't want coolant in my driveway or garage. So that's gonna help us maintain control of the coolant that's still inside the charge air cooler. The only way to get that out is to pour it out. All right, there we go. And now we're ready to take off the charge air cooler. Using our 10 millimeter again, we have three bolts. My memory failed me. You probably saw that in the camera on this side though. Straight up, not losing any coolant. I skipped a step that I want to make sure that I take care of. So I'm gonna set this back down. We're gonna go ahead and put two bolts back in and you'll see why in just a second. All right, we got our charge air cooler temperature sensor right here using a 16 millimeter wrench. Now I like this tightened down because then it's holding on to it. So I'll pull it towards that way, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're gonna go ahead and break this one free as well. And that's just turning it counterclockwise. I'm gonna leave it like that, they're loose. I can take them off by hand and we'll show that later. And there is our bracket. Now you can see the uh, heat shield here overhangs on there a little bit. We've got a bolt and stud or a stud and a nut that come through right here. This one's the tough one. We'll see how this goes, but we got to get the bracket out so we can get the new bracket in. Now what we're going to do, all the 10 millimeter nuts on this truck so far have been the exact same and they're going to continue to be the same. So that's why I'm able to just kind of bundle them up bundle them up right there. But what we're gonna do is work on this heat shield right here. This 10, we don't wanna mix that up with these. So what we're gonna do is just take these out and we'll set these aside because we know that these hold the charger cooler down. This one took the stud out with it. Paying attention to that, we'll remember that for later. See the length of this bolt? That's a little bit shorter than what we pulled out from the charge air cooler. That's why we don't want to mix those up. Now there's one more down here. Just a basic gear wrench, 10 millimeter. Flex head, ratcheting wrench, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now this bolt is the same length. You always pay attention to the length of the bolts. Heat shield bolt, same length, that's excellent. So now we can move this to the side. We can't remove it because there's a sensor down there, but we don't have to remove it. We just need to get this bracket off, which just looks like a 13. We're gonna go ahead and work on that right now. Three, it's battery operated impact gun. 
There we go. 13 millimeter it was. So we just pull up this bracket, set that bracket there, set that bolt there. So now we have a couple tens. We can see that there's a hose coming along right here and that just slides out like that. That's gonna stay put. We need to work on this plastic piece that connects to the bracket here. But what we're gonna do is unbolt the bracket first so we have some flexibility with that. Once again, paying attention to these bolts because I don't recall what the length of these bolts are. We're gonna use this corner of the tray pretty long one. Now, I just noticed something. If you guys have been watching closely, you know that I have not dropped one nut that I recall. Got one right here. That was dropped from the factory, I'm assuming. And this is not the first time that I have experienced this. Actually, my other truck had the very similar situation where I did find a nut like this. We're going to set this aside so that way we don't confuse ourselves within that but that's funny that that was there always pay attention you don't want anything falling into any open hole you could damage your engine and ultimately ruin it another long bolt all three of those have been the same length again same length so we have four we have a fifth right here Right there, all the same length, five bolts. Now you can see that's flexible. Now that's gonna come in handy pretty soon because we're gonna get to the tough part of the job. 10 millimeter on the no extension. We're gonna go ahead and just take off that nut right there. Being very careful not to drop this because you'll probably never find it again. All right, and that's the exact same as all the others. So now this can pull back. There's one more down here, and that's, that's a tough one to get to. The goal here is to get this stud out. See it right there? That's gonna be a long one. Now, what we're gonna try to do is loosen that, but leave the stud in place, because that goes through to this bracket. And with this bracket being loose, I think we can get it. 10 millimeter wrench. Broke it loose right there. And now, like so. So I'm able to spin it from the front. I'm just loosening it right now, trying to get it off of the bracket. There are other ways you could do this. This is how I'm doing it. You could shake it if it feels like it binds up a little bit. You could also just get the nut right down below here to pull this harness forward. It's difficult to get to. It's very risky to uh, drop the nut down in there. And we may do that. We could just loosen it, right? Let's just go loosen it. All right, so I loosened it. Because I don't want to take it all the way out because I know I can't get that back in. But now, that's actually the way to go. By pulling on this, we may be able to get the bracket up and out. Actually, no, we can't get the bracket up and out because we need this stud off of there, but I'm just loosening the stud like so. And it All right, now, without ripping anything, there we go, we got the bracket off, and I'm gonna go closer into here to show you. This is where the stud was threaded into, and this is the stud right there. See how it holds the oil filler neck onto that bracket, which also holds the harness bracket on there. We're gonna leave that just the way that it is, and then we're gonna get our new bracket installed right now. So we have all of our parts laid out right here on the bench. And what I like to do is just kind of visualize and see everything for myself. Now there are multiple bolts 
that you need to be very close or pay close attention to and that are these those two bolts right there these little grommets these can go onto the charger or cooler right inside there we'll work on that I'm just using a little screwdriver to kind of just walk it into place now these guys just slide right in through the top All right, now I'm gonna just open everything up so I can see it all. We have bracket, much larger bracket to fit the larger charger or cooler. This is engineering awesomeness right here that they actually took the time to make a bracket to make it all fit like factory is absolutely incredible. Let me grab the old bracket to show. GM bracket here on the right. PP bracket on the left. Look at that. Look how close they got to just everything on it. It's just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we're going to go into the instructions and see what we need to swap over and where the extra bolts or the special bolts go. All right, so I'm reading through the instructions. Flange bolt P goes in this location here. I set this bolt aside so I know when we go to put the bracket in. Long bolt right here is what's going to go right there on that bracket. Now they also go into the studs that we need to swap over, which I haven't done yet, and we will get to that in just a moment. However, what we want to jump to is the coupler installation. Be sure to lubricate the O-ring on the turbo adapter with silicone brake lube, as it says in the instructions right here. You can also put it on the turbo. But here is what I am using. This is just based off of a product that I bought off of Amazon. Super easy to use and works extremely well. Link down in the description. I'm gonna know the keyways on the bottom. This is at 12 o'clock right there. Let's go and get this into place. It can be tough. So I'm gonna climb into the truck and really get on this thing. Actually, what I'm gonna do, pull this off so that way I'm not fighting that. That took a lot. That took a lot. That's not easy. Wiggling it, taking a break, wiggling it, taking a break. Get this clamp on. I'm out of breath. Want to note something? Do not push on this. That's your intake manifold. You can crack that. Just find leverage. I grabbed onto the back side of the turbo to kind of pull. It took a lot of effort. It really did. But that's snug as a bug in a rug. Let's go. All right, so now we want to put the boot on there. Now what we want, we can actually wait for the clamps. You can put those on afterwards. You want to put this on so that way the PP is facing whichever direction you would like it to go. In my case, I want it up like so. All right, so that's in place. We're going to go ahead and slip this clamp on. And we're going to go ahead and slip this clamp on. Now you can see the orientation that I'm doing like that. It's just going to make it look nicer when it's tucked away back like that. All right, leaving those loose, we're going to put the bracket on. Here comes the fun of this stud again, but I tell you, once we get that stud on, it's all downhill from here. Once again, fighting with this, I'm pulling this back. And pull stud back, so that way we can get that threaded. And we're going to start that and get it tight by hand. We need to swap that over. We could do that afterwards, actually, so we're okay. We're going to focus on this bracket and this bolt because I hate this stud. Just be sure to do this by hand. Keep it straight. If you don't do it by hand, it's going to cross thread potentially. But just keep spinning it. We'll get there. Using my 10 millimeter, I'm going to tighten this up now. Here we go, that's tight. I'm going to put some gloves back on because I ripped my gloves. So starting off, remembering special bolt that PPE provided, let's show the difference right here. You can see if you use the wrong bolt, then uh, that's not good. I'm going to put this bolt into its proper spot right there. 
I'm gonna set this bolt aside so that way we don't make any mistakes. All right, now all bolts need to be started before you tighten any of them. So starting that by hand, I'm wiggling it back and forth. And we can go ahead and use the rest of the bolts like so. Again, starting every single one of them. Once we've started all of them, we can tighten them down. Everything is still a 10 millimeter. Crisscross is good. I'm letting out of the trigger as I get closer to the bottom because if I just hold it wide open and then tighten it down, you have the chance of breaking a bolt head. I did not tighten those down very much. Now with a hand ratchet, you can snug them all down. This is just a quarter inch ratchet. Long extension was at roughly four inches long and then just a standard 10 millimeter socket there. All right, now that's on. What we can do is tighten this down because we don't want to forget about this. So I'm going to take one of these nuts and I'm going to stick it on there. Start to tighten it. We'll take the 10 millimeter off of here on our quarter inch electric ratchet. Now, this is where the electric ratchet is very key because it really helps. You don't have much room in here to do much like this. There we go, that's tight, not too much. You don't want to break anything. So now we got to go and get this one in there that you just cannot see. All right, look at that. We got the bracket on. It's good and tight. Fits perfect. Look at that. It just does not bind up on anything. I need to swap this over right here, which I'll go pop that off. I'm going to get our studs swapped, and uh, there's a bolt that you use here. We'll get into that. Let's roll. All right, so this 13 millimeter is going to go back on. This bracket's going to go back on, so we're going to take our 13 millimeter here. We already have one stud off right here, so we're going to go ahead and take off the other stud. Let me go see what size this is. All right, so using the stud right here, it's an inverted Torx. Now I'm using an E6. I believe this is an E5, but the kit that I have here at my house does not go that low. It fits a little loose. So I believe this is an E5, but I'm gonna attempt an E6. We're gonna do it by hand. I just gotta remove one stud from there, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I'm gonna remove this stud right here. Let's hope this goes. Thankfully, they're not that tight. All right, thankfully they're not that tight and we can just thread those back on like so. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one down as well. I'm not gonna get these that tight, just gonna, just gonna get it there. So you can see there's a gap between the, the nut and the bracket. That's why I did not remove the nut from the stud because I knew I could just reuse that. So we're going to go ahead, put that on there like so. Everything is started, so now we can tighten these tens and that 13. All right, let's get these set back into place. So now we know there's a, a bolt that goes there. We know there's a bolt that goes down here. 
And now we're using the other PPE provided bolt for this location right here. Now I was holding that straight so that way it doesn't bind up on there. We don't have any rattle. Tighten this one by hand. We'll get the ratcheting wrench on there as well. All right, we have the charge air cooler here and I'm holding it incorrectly. All right, we have the charge air cooler here and now here is the trick to getting this installed the easiest possible way. So what you wanna do is dip the back end down, get it into the boot, I'm wiggling it. All right, and then we're gonna roll it down. In doing so, I turned my PP boot right there. Now we need to pay attention to this harness right here. And as you can tell, I do not have my temp sensor in yet because I don't want to run the risk of breaking it. Now you can install the temp sensors beforehand and then put them, and then you got to deal with it right here. And But I didn't want to snag up on anything. But oh my God, look at that thing. All right, let's figure out what to do with this harness. Does it go under? Does it go over? Does it go around like this? Let's find out. All right, the instructions show the harness goes under here. So there we go, coming right through there. I'm okay with that. So what we need now is the boot on that end. This boot should have gone before the charge air cooler. That's not a terrible thing because we can fix this. We can lift this up, got my boot like this. Now, as we rotate down, being very gentle, hose tool. I'm going to be super duper careful with this. Let's get you a camera right here. So you can see we're bound up like this. So I just want to roll this. Whoa, hey, 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 stay with me here. I just want to roll this up a little bit. Kind of just walking it around it, like so. While also pushing on it. All right. So now we got our harness down here. There we go. I want this turned a little bit more like that. So it looks better. That's orientation correctly. All right. Man, that is good looking right there. So before we tighten down these boots, I wanna get all four bolts into the charge air cooler we are using the four factory bolts and we want to get all of these started before you tighten any. Now, I'm pulling on this a little bit to get that started there. So this needs to go that way a little bit. So I'm just kind of pushing and shaking it. I want these started several threads so that way there's no binding cross threading or anything like that. So now we'll get the back two. Same thing. Just kind of move it around. Let it find the threads. Don't force anything.
This will tell you if your orientation is correct, how hard it is to thread these in. And these got super easy now that I basically twisted it like this a little bit. Now the boots are all loose, so they're able to work with me. Now let's tighten those down. We're gonna do this by hand, just to show how easy these bolts are to snug down. If you have any binding or anything, you did something incorrectly and fix it. As you can see, I didn't just ram one of them all the way down, getting them all down uniformly. Now these are all ran down until they're touching. Now we can snug this one up, checking out this harness. It's not binding up. You're not squishing it. Nice. All right, before we get too much further, what I want to do is the temperature sensors. Now I'm going to start with the one in the back and they're still on the charger cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and I'm going to do it one by one so we don't mix them up. We're looking at the charger cooler here. This is the one nearest the firewall. So we're just going to unscrew this one and then take this out. We're going to wipe off that oil that's on it and we're going to go put this. Well, let's just wipe off the oil that's in it on it. Yes, we're okay there. Go straight to where it belongs. We, we don't mix it up. We don't have any errors, no mistakes. Okay, it's finger tight. Now we're going to do this one. And you can see I have it overhanging on the toolbox like this. That's because if you set this on the ground, you're going to snap this off. But see, we broke those free prior, and now this is super easy to get off of there. It's a lot of oil on there. We're again going to wipe all that off. I'm going to set the camera down though. All cleaned up. Now we're going to go straight to the bottom there. This is going to be a little tough. I need both hands for this. All right, so you want to be sure not to bend this probe at all. Do not damage this at all. If you drop this, you should replace it. If you scratch it up, you should replace it. Anything that happens to this, you should replace it. made it worse terrible idea with the camera all right so I'm holding it from the underside right here and then I'm gonna spin it with my fingers from this side not forcing anything feels like it's binding up just back it off a little bit start over now that those are started I'm gonna go ahead and just snug them up just a little bit very gentle I'm going to snug this one up. All right, got it. So now we're going to plug in this, the connector. We're going to locate where the locking tab is. You heard that positive click. Push the lock in. Same for this bottom one. Let's wait till that car drives by. Listen for the click. There it is. Lock is in place. Real good. Now what we can do is work on these clamps. I rotate those down like this. So they're not visible. All right, so I needed to swap this over and put it on the bracket earlier and I forgot to do it and I talked about it in the video. I need to swap that over. We could do that afterwards actually, so we're okay. Okay. As you can see, that was a fight to get it in place because I waited so long. Now do that earlier. So you must do that because that's your hose. That's a coolant hose. If you don't install that, it's gonna rattle around, could create a leak bend uh, bend a weld or bend out a weld and then cause a leak right there. Just, just tighten that up. Also remember to tighten this up as well. It may or may not be loose, I don't know. Never trust anything brand new. Let's keep it going.
All right, so these are seven millimeters again in the back. Ah, just kidding, those are eights. I don't want those too tight to where that they break. So I'm just getting it started and then I'll just do this by hand. Now we're gonna work on these guys. This. Oh, that got crooked. That looks terrible. Okay, so looks like we are rolling pretty good. We need to get the hoses on. We need to get this bracket in place. All right, we got our bracket that needs to go right here. Now I see there's another hole here for the LZ0. See so the LM2 will bolt up here. LZ0 will bolt up here. This is gonna be our sensor. All right, so unfortunately in my application, the bolts did not work because I believe the knock sensor is thicker than the LM2 on the LC0. So I'm unsure on that. However, I'm gonna to have to improvise and I'm gonna to need to come up with some longer bolts. Now this is an earlier kit, so maybe there's been some revisions. I do know that they added this hole in there, which is fantastic, but I need some longer bolts to which I had some right here. So this is gonna go ahead and go through there and it's gonna work the same way. We're just gonna have a longer bolt right there, but it's not gonna to be too long. It's gonna fit just fine. We'll use the same on the back side there. So using the same installation process, we're gonna put this on with the longer bolts. All right, so those are tight. My bracket is tight. My bolt is not bound up on anything. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my sensor over. Got that right there. So I'm gonna grab one of the nuts. I'm gonna grab the bolt that I have. All right, now we'll go ahead and get 10 millimeter on this as well. I'm pushing on the knock sensor that way to kind of hold the bolt in place. And now we'll have to come up with a plan to get that to tighten. First, let's just be smart about it and just try a 10 millimeter bolt, which fits, or a rat or wrench, which fits fine. No need to come up with any crazy plans. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. There we go. Get a wrench on the back side here. There we go, not too tight, you don't wanna break anything. So now this harness needs to be held in place with the factory retainer. So I'm gonna go pop those off right now. There we go. Just gonna unlatch this. So that it's up, get our harness right there like that. Push that down, now we can push it in, good to go. Now this is why they gave us the hoses, see how this wouldn't work? I mean, I guess you could make that work, but why do that when you have perfection? And we'll install that next. Let's get this connected right here. Click, everything clicks. So if I didn't break that tab completely, that would be able to stay there better. Hose time. All right, being mindful of where your hose clamps are going to go. Is that in place? Hose time. These are gonna be a little bit tight, so I'm gonna loosen these up so that way you can go over. Just regular flathead screwdriver. You can use an eight millimeter socket as well if you want. I'm just loosening those up a little bit so they slide better. Slide that into place. I rotate the clamp so that way it is somewhat out of sight. Now you don't want to tighten this too much because you don't want to break the plastic. But you also don't want it too loose and have a leak. So 
I'm gonna use my ratchet to try to hide that a little bit. Okay, that's on. It's good to go. We need to do this hose next. May or may not have a mess right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this down here to try and catch anything, if anything does come out. Regular channel lock style pliers. Okay. No spillage. Nice. Now it's the other hose. Loosening this up ahead of time. It's going to go on there. Loosen this one up ahead of time. You can see the nice bend. Everything is just right with that. No need for the paper towels. Superb. All right, now this one is the plastic one. We don't want to break this. I'm going to do this by hand, so I'll start off by just tightening like this. Start to feel it bind up a little bit, and we're just going to go like this. I bend the ratchet like this so there's not a whole lot of leverage on there. Minimizes my chance of breaking stuff. I said minimize. Now this one, same thing. I'm just trying to hide the clamp as much as I can. I'm gonna use a shallow eight for just limited room over here. All right, that's tight. We've already done this one, not gonna to touch that. Okay, now I'm looking at this AC line. It's a little close to that bracket. So I just twist it off, off of there a little bit so there's no rubbing right there. This we're gonna rotate down so it's not visible. Let's get some coolant in there. As you see, I have not tightened that back down because the way that I'm gonna fill it is I'm gonna use gravity to help us here to start off. What I have here is some premix. Do not add water. So I don't have to do any 50-50 mixing or anything like that. I just have to simply pour it in. Okay, now to start with, you can see I filled it all the way up. Now watch this. When you lift it up, see the bubbles? filling the charge air cooler currently we're going to do this a couple times now the other option if you have the ability to you can turn on the coolant pump with the scan tool which i do have the ability to but i'm trying to make this video so regular person in their garage can do this install good news is that the air is all up on the top so if you did go to start it the pump shouldn't get air to it for a little while it may purge itself perfectly fine it may not not worth the risk in my opinion so it's best to just do this all in all expect to use about a half a gallon on this All right, so it's a little bit overfilled right now. That's okay, because when I go to turn it on, then the pump will work that through. I'm gonna put that bolt on there. Put this cap on before we spill. All right, now we want to make sure we get all of our tools out. I'm gonna put the cap on. You can see the leftover four nuts right there. That's for the brackets that are on there. You can see why that extra bolt was needed right in there. We can officially start this up now. Everything's good and tight. It's out of the way, nothing's gonna catch on fire. All right, so I'm hoping to see some air bubbles come through in here. 
just to kind of let me know that the pump is working in it. Blow everything through. And take this cap off. And nothing going there. All right, so we just started it up. Now the cool thing about having an eye dash is I can see charge air cooler one, charge air cooler two, and now I can make sure that the pump is running and getting all the coolant through like we need it to. All right, so we're comparing charger cooler one, charger cooler two, 59 degrees. Ambient is 59 degrees. We have temperature changes so we know everything is flowing through. You can see charger cooler one was going higher, charger cooler two. All right, so this looks super awesome, and then you have this dumb looking oil cap right there. So we could take this off, set it to the side, and grab our billet aluminum PPE oil fill cap right there. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Oh, that's nice. All right, so I'm a knucklehead, and I forgot that there is a bleed port right there. So while I was lifting this up, I could have had this open, but we're okay. I did what I did right here, but since this is higher up right there, this is a good bleed point right there. You can lift this up while filling, and it's going to purge the air out of there, and then it'll eventually string some coolant out of there, and then you close it up. Now, I told you to make sure that it's tight before you do anything, and uh, there we go. So now I'm tightening it. That's good and tight. 